Tech Update. What kind of technologies are required to localize your operations in LATAM? Thanks, Jess. Uh, I'm Oliver De Bono, the CEO at Condor Gaming, and I'm here uh, on site with Sigma Americas Focus Tech Update. So let's talk about technology for a minute. I'm here in the studio with Peter, Dimitri, and Alejandro, veterans of the gaming industry. Now, we know technology has always played, obviously, a major role within the gaming industry. But what we're here today to find out is how this differs in the Latin American market. Uh, Peter, I want to kick off with you, as I remember when we had met the first time, there were some very interesting bits of information that we exchanged, uh, especially when it came to the games and products that are being produced for the Latin American market. Uh, particularly, there was some interest in, in, in particular games that were coming out uh, for the Brazilian market. For example, we know that this is a market very interested in video bingo, which created its let's own, own development needs over there. But specifically looking at LATAM, what can we expect from this market for the, the requirements in tech? Because people have uh, uh, an idea that LATAM is one market, but we know that there are major differentials. So what kind of technology games and products do we expect to see that need to develop on their own in the market, Peter? Okay, well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, let me try to explain a little bit here that uh, you are absolutely correct. Latin America is a very diverse market. Uh, uh, we have Brazil, which is the only Portuguese or Brazilian speaking country. And we have all the rest of Latin America, which is Spanish speaking. And they could not be further apart or more diverse uh, than ever. They could be opposite sides of the globe. That's how different they are. But the truth is that each one of these countries in Latin America, you name it, Chile, Peru, Argentina, they're also very different between each other. So, I mean, our company was founded in, in, in the concept that localization is key, right? So, uh, and never has it been more important than in Latin America. Uh, so, uh, we have developed basically a structure for a gaming platform, which is a very localized gaming platform. I can talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and we have developed also uh, uh, local games, local content. So uh, I've been working with the uh, game development for the past almost 20 years. I worked with IGT and CIRSA, and we were actually the first ones to develop localized games in Brazil back a long time ago when uh, 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 bingo was, was, was uh, legalized in Brazil. But it had to be, and slot games were allowed as long as they were slot uh, uh, bingo uh, uh, theme games. So we developed the first what we called so-called video bingo games. And uh, these video bingo games were developed for CSA, for, for, for IGT. And uh, in the past years, what we decided is say, we want to be the king of the mountain in terms of development of video bingo games or localized games for Brazil and Latin America. So we developed very specific video bingo games. And these video bingo games are basically uh, 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 games uh, uh, developed in HTML5 with special graphics, with special user experience for Latin America, and they have been extremely successful. We are now launching our first slot games also. Uh, once again, localized slot games with localized themes, localized user experience, and so on. Uh, that's a little bit up in terms of content. We also have our GAP platform where we sort of select games from many providers we have over 50 providers but what we do is we select games that we see that do very well because we have so many clients and we have metrics is that we can see which games do well and where they do well right some games that do very well in brazil do not do, do not do very well in 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 mexico or peru or vice versa so for example light games Light games don't do very well in, in Brazil, but they do very well in Mexico, you know. So we selected games that do well in each one of these regions, and we provide those metrics in our GAP platform. Well, that, that's really interesting because, again, you keyed the word over there, localization. So you always need to think local. But this really affects technology and the ability to develop games because you do need to make multiple investments to develop games with, let's say, different types of technology. Because, you know, uh, from my understanding, you have certain markets that are, let's say, into their poker networks. You've got sportsbook products. You've got live games. You've got video bingo. But each one of these requires its own development team as the products differ very, very much. So, Dimitri, I just want I want to touch on that subject a little bit. What kind of products or development um, games are, are, are you focused on when looking at the LATAM market? So, uh, our main focus is poker, 
poker platform. That's the only thing we are actually doing for already 15 years. So I can say they have we, we have diverse uh, proposition of different games. We only offer poker from the um, uh, games perspective, but uh, as you maybe know, uh, poker requires different technologies for client software. For example, uh, we offer uh, desktop clients, so people can download uh, software on their PC or Mac OS and play from the software. We offer mobile native apps, so people can install on their mobile phones uh, apps and play from these apps. And we also offer HTML5 uh, responsive app that is available online. So what what we found interesting about um, Latin America, uh, first I would say is that we have started uh, like approaching Latin American market not so long time ago, not like future. We are not having so huge experience, so like just maybe one year our experience. And what we found in Latin America, uh, what what's different there first is uh, mobile, very mobile focused mm -hmm. market. So players, uh, poker players, they not they don't demand, for example, desktop apps uh, like in Europe, uh, like in Poker Stars. So mostly for 85%, uh, according to our research, uh, play from mobile phones. And second. Um, they also uh, players in Latin America. They also uh, are very like uh, okay to play from HTML5 app. I mean, like to play online. Uh, they don't need to install uh, apps on their phones. So it's not like for them like strict requirement to install app on their phones. They're okay to play online. They don't have all this stuff because I think uh, poker in Latin America and doesn't have so long history so it's only like emerging market right now so and this way players they are not so like, experienced and they uh, welcome some like new technologies like HTML5 responsive apps so, but this makes it very interesting. You mentioned native apps before, and obviously we've seen in Europe um, th that kind of development has had some hurdles, especially with iOS, you know, breaking down a lot of apps out of the store and pushing games providers and, and poker providers such as yourself to develop native apps. So how has this uh, affected the integrations, development times? Um, does, does LATAM have these same hurdles? Because if the market is requesting these products where you can get away with it in Europe, obviously you then need to go back and say, okay, we need to develop those native apps to enter the Latin American market. Has this affected, let's say, the penetration in the market greatly, Dimitri? No, actually, no. As I said, uh, like HTML, uh, mostly plays uh, in 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 Latam, they uh, they don't they they, they don't require like uh, native app installed on their phones. They are okay to play from HTML5 app. Comparing to Europe or comparing to Asia, it's uh, completely different. So, uh, considering all these problems with Google Play and App Store. Uh, what I like about LATAM, it's uh, very easy to operate there, even with HTML5 very responsive app. So people don't feel like that it's a problem for them. That's good about the uh, LATAM market. And oh, sorry, I, would, I would say, like as Peter said before, Latin American market is quite different. It really depends on which country we are talking about. So like Argentina, for example, they have longer history playing poker, so they play desktop apps, they play native apps, and they play different kind of. Uh, but they behave mostly more like European players. Talking about Colombia or Peru, the newcomers, the emerging uh, markets and players, they play HTML5 and they don't need anything else. In uh, Brazil, players prefer native apps installed on their phones. So it's different. 
Okay, so this, this, this again, we're going back to what Peter said earlier, you create a lot of localization as your development does change depending on the country you're going into because obviously utilizing the HTML5 um, apps for, for, for penetrating the majority of the market, yet if Brazil is your target, which is one of the larger markets in LATAM, then you do need to change your development strategy to accommodate the native apps. So this is what makes it quite interesting. But going out of mobile and looking at the products themselves, Alejandro, uh, you, you mentioned Argentina before, uh, Dimitri, and I wanna just touch on this with you, Alejandro. We know that there, there are different interests in all the markets. Looking at um, Argentina, what would you say are, are, are let's say, the interesting um, products in the region and how is it affecting technology when it comes to live studios because I was under the impression that Argentina does have a love of live casino. Is this the case and are there studios who are developing technology in this sector in Argentina? Uh, really, really I don't know. I, I know that uh, we um, people in Argentina loves live casino. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, in all America uh, people lo uh, love Lives Casino. Uh, I think more than that, that um, I'm based on my personal experience, okay? Because uh, we worked many years in Europe and the last uh, 15 years and our mind uh, worked purely online, okay? Yeah. So when we started with the new project here in LATAM, uh, our main goal was to create a, a real omni-channel technology. I think the point of the key point here is the omni-channel technology. So to have the capacity to supply uh, land base, to supply online operators, to supply live casinos, mm -hmm. okay? And we have in LATAM, in the different countries, uh, different uh, models, okay? So in my experience with uh, bingo multiplayer, so you have, uh, especially in Brazil, a lot of operators with uh, uh, retail, physical point of sale, kiosk, agencies. So uh, in terms of development, okay, uh, we need to create a technology that can support uh, all these kind of uh, new requirements, okay? Not only live, okay? Because uh, to go into a live casino, you know, for bingo, you need a, a real blower, you need a studio. So we have this uh, capacity here in LATAM and, and many companies are doing that. But I think uh, the real key point to be succeed uh, here in LATAM is to think uh, on omni-channel, okay? So you need to provide the technology with the capacity to, to work online, land-based, in a high frequency, low frequency uh, for standard lotteries, okay? So I think this is it's one of the key points here in LATAM. Well, this is very interesting, you're mentioning omnichannel and, and, and the technology, because I think it's also a cultural thing. When, as an operator going into the market, we have noticed that a lot of the land-based games are what the customer wants online. So that's when you have the omnichannel. You need the brands that are familiar uh, when a customer walks into a land-based casino. They want to see that product online, which makes it very interesting. But talking about omnichannel and, and, and diverse products, Peter, back to you. Uh, when we had our first conversation about, about let's say, the, the, the LATAM market, we knew that aggregation was one of the keys. And I'd love to go into aggregation a little bit and my omnichannel providers because we the, there is a sense of trust. There is, let's say, cultural uh, requirements that do change development needs. So looking at the LATAM market, what would you say are the key features you need to penetrate the market, obviously, as, as, as a games provider? Interesting question because I mean, uh, as I told you, our gap aggregator platform we have we work with over 40 or 50 providers. But the key is to say, okay, what games will do well in which market? And that's where we sort of work in partnerships together with our uh, 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 suppliers, trying to identify and trying to help them on the development of games, you know. So, uh, lately we've been working with one supplier uh, to develop a very specific game for Brazil uh, mm -hmm. with some certain characters which are very popular in Brazil to try to develop something that really would work very, very, very well in Brazil. 
uh, we do that a lot with the, with, with our uh, uh, key suppliers, but we also go through the whole selection uh, um, process of games. And what we do is that we have many operators which are clients of ours, and we are able through metrics to analyze which games do well in which region. So metrics is really important, and it's something that we supply to all of our clients so they can understand what games do well and where they do well. It's not only graphics, it's not only the math, it's a combination of a lot of factors that make a game successful. And sometimes it's very difficult to define what it is that makes the game be successful. Of course, we have our magic formula of what we think is, is, is the formula to make it successful. We share it with our, with our partners where we try to develop games that are successful, such as ourselves. We recently acquired a studio in Brazil uh, that is also working to develop our initial first slot games, which we will launch, I think, in three or four weeks, uh, uh, our, our first slot game called Pilot Up, which will be really interesting. And uh, it has been developed with these, with these ideas in mind. I mean, uh, uh, how, we, how can we localize? What kind of map do we use, you know? And, and what kind of technology are the people using? But Alejandro is also uh, uh, very correct that the omni-channel is very important. So most of our games, we also make them available uh, uh, for, for land-based machines. And, and that is quite important because the other way, as you mentioned also, is very important. So we see suppliers that have very popular games like Merkur in Latin America or Novomatic. And we try to use those games which are popular in the land-based market. And we try to use them also in the online. So we, we are able to supply them through our gap aggregator. Well, that, that's exactly it. So I, we are talking about, you know, centralized um, products that the customers want. Alejandro, you mentioned the omni-channel before and you did mention, you know, customers being, let's say, prone to playing games that they're familiar with uh, in land base. And you, and you want to have one product that fits all devices. But what about development of, let's say, the more classical games? Do you have quite um, uh, a lot of products that are, let's say, on the more traditional slot games in land-based casinos. Have you, let's say, is there much need for integration of these games to, let's say, your omni-channel products? Uh, really, um, right now, the, the, technolo the technologies are uh, advanced and I think uh, the, the state of the art right now is uh, aggregator platform like mm -hmm. uh, Peter has, they can uh, integrate any technology, okay? So the problem is not the the integration. I think, uh, uh, especially in in LATAM, another another key point for me it's the uh, adaptability. Okay, so in my personal case, so we are uh, we develop a bingo multiplayer. So you know, bingo is not the same in UK, in Spain, in US. So we have hundreds of variants of bingo. Uh, we can build. Uh, completely different game based on, on bingo. Really, a bingo is a lottery game, okay? So my second key point here for LATAM is uh, to have the possibility to adapt to the operator, okay? Because um, in, in the different countries, uh, in different jurisdictions, so the operators, the main operator, they have a different business model to implement, for example, a bingo game, okay? So it's important on the technology. It's different like Europe, because in Europe you have uh, you have the bingo platforms and you integrate with the different operator. Here, you need to adapt your game to the business model of the operator, okay? Because all of them have, has a uh, different kind of, of, of bingo game. Mm -hmm. So uh, coming back to development, okay? So we need to create a technology uh, with the power to adapt to the operator business model. So I think it's, it's another key point. So that, that's very interesting. So you mentioned a lot of integration. So would you say that's one of the main hurdles in the, in the LATAM market is integration into the operator's platforms? Alejandro? Mm. Yeah, yeah um, um, we provide content, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, the only way that uh, we, we, we will connect with operators is uh, through the integrations, okay? So right now we are a new company, 
okay we started two years ago uh with a different uh, point of view with the idea of the omni channel and we are trying to provide really right now we are providing some of the main operators mm -hmm. in latam uh, and, and the, the the funny thing is uh, all of them are completely different okay so it's the same technology with different adaptations for each one uh, not only brazil uh, because it's a very particular market, okay? Uh, each jurisdiction is completely different. So we, you can do a, a standard integration with your technology, but finally, the final configuration, the final setup is completely different. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, Dimitri, I want to go over to you a second. So we're just going to touch on this subject a little bit more. Uh, we are slowly running out of time, but I want to go into it in looking at, at your product, poker. Uh, have you found the same kind of hurdles when it comes to integrating into LATAM-based operators? Are there, let's say, particular technologies or, or, or skill sets that are required for API integrations, for you know, developing your product when you're looking at LATAM, Dimitri? Uh, I don't, I don't see any like huge uh, uh, difference in integration part. But uh, I would agree with Alejandro regarding customizations. What I found in uh, Latin America, uh, operators they require like they don't like to be like others. They they often require uh, change in layout. They often require change in colors. They won't um, require to be different. So. This is important, I think, for operators in Latin America, like to to be different to others. So this is what, uh, and uh, it, it it takes for you additional effort to adapt a product for their operation. Okay, yeah, exactly. So it it is quite about adaptability. So we have seen that, and that again goes back to the initial term we spoke about before, which is localization. But what I want to touch on just as we close up over here is that we have seen a massive potential market. But what about, let's say, key requirements? Peter, just the last one for you over here. What about when it comes to technology? We, we, we had spoken in the past that aggregators were pretty much a very strong way forward to enter LATAM, which makes uh, integration obviously far easier for the operator because you're getting far more products with, with less integration requirements. But when it comes to the actual, let's say, customer interest, what, what, what would you say are the key requirements to ensure that the, the, the operators get their products? Because we are talking about a quickly diversified market and there are you know, unique products, especially for example, if you're looking payments, ha does this affect development times or integrations at all into your games? It, well, you know, let, let me add this, that your question to also a couple of comments made here uh, by Alejandro. So uh, what I noticed with uh, in Latin America is that there are many operators using different platforms. Some of these platforms are very, uh, uh, very simple uh, uh, platforms. And uh, most of these operators, they don't have the structure, the development structure necessary to complement themselves with integrations. So that is really where we come in. You know, we are the integration solution provider because these companies, they cannot, uh, uh, it, sometimes they use a platform which they cannot do the integration in time or it's gonna take over six months to do the integration. They want a very specific content, they can't do it, right? So integrations are key. Most operators with their platforms do not have the control or are not able to do the integrations as fast as they would like to or the integrations that they would like to. So GAP is the solution for these operators because we have all these content providers already integrated. And what we do is that if a client of ours wants to integrate a certain product, we integrate the product for them. No fees, no minimums, no nothing, okay? So one simple agreement, okay, uh, uh, one revenue share and he gets all the content and can he, he can still request for more content. So we are really a technical solutions provider. Why? Because integrations is complicated. It's complicated for any operator, even more so in Latin America. And complementing also what Alejandro is saying, I mean, we are working together with Alejandro to be able to complement uh, uh, his uh, multiplayer bingo with our video bingo games, right? Because he, 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 he in Latin America, we noticed that they're that, they have to complete each other. So people like to play uh, uh, bingo, 
But as a bingo is, is a slow game, right? It takes a two, three, four minutes for each round to happen. While they're playing the round, they're also playing the side games. And we know that side games in video bingo is very, very important. So that's what we provide in, and we integrate our video bingo games and our games together with Alejandro's platform, okay? So all these kinds of integrations and being able to provide that kind of content that players really want is key, is essential, because the difficulty that providers have in terms of integrations, getting the right slot, making the integration happen, it's, it's, it gets really complicated. Fantastic. Well, look, guys, that, that's really interesting. And what we can coin here is that integrations are the key and aggregators are, uh, and omnichannel solutions are the way forward. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. It's been great having you all on the show. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, Jess, back to you.